Now I'm going to quickly run through the four steps for setting up a scope again. I know that I've taught these in other videos, but these four steps are critical if you want to set up a scope and successfully get the waveform you're looking for. So step number one is always choose your probe. So we'd come over here to the channel that we're going to use and select the probe that we're going to use. If you're going to use voltage, choose the times one probe. If you're going to use an attenuator, choose that attenuator from this list if it's here. If it's not here, like mine isn't, and I'm using a 20 to 1 attenuator, for example, choose this times 20 probe. And that will multiply whatever voltage is coming through the attenuator into the scope by 20. And so it'll actually read the actual voltage that you're, that you're measuring right here on your screen again. If you have a 10 to 1 attenuator, of course, choose the times 10 probe. If you're going to be measuring current with a current clamp or using any other sensor, choose that probe. If it's not here, we'll have to create or import the probe that we need. Okay, so that's step one, choose your probe. Step two is to come over here now and choose the range that you want. Now this range will be based upon the probe that we chose, so you always have to choose the probe first. If I chose a current clamp as my probe, these range options would be in amps. So let's say that I'm going to be measuring voltage on a 12 volt automotive system. So this plus or minus 20 volt range ought to be sufficient. Okay, now step three is to choose the time base. Now by default, the time base is usually going to be in milliseconds or in microseconds. And generally, that's not what we want. Sometimes we do when we're measuring very fast things, such as a CAN bus. But generally, we're going to want to actually come down here in this bottom section and measure in seconds per division. So maybe five seconds per division, which means it would take five seconds for this cursor to cross each of these grid lines or each of these divisions, which means I would be recording for 50 seconds. And that's one way to look at it is how long do I need to record for to capture this waveform. So that's step three is choose your time base and usually choose it in seconds. Now step four is one that gets skipped a lot. Step four is to increase your requested sample rate. Right here, and again, I have a separate video that's going to explain what sample rate or number of samples are, but here's where I request the number of samples that I want. I would recommend you hold your mouse button down and let that climb as high as it can. Max it out at two giga samples. Now, you probably won't get two giga samples. You can see your actual sample rate over here. I would recommend that unless you're planning to export or do something special with your data that you're collecting, you always request the highest sample rate that is possible. So those are the four steps for setting up a scope. And if you use those four steps, you shouldn't have any problems getting the waveform that you're looking for.